natively integrates to over 30 different types of data source, including NoSQL, relational, data warehouses, flat files, and REST APIs. For this example, though, I'm going to use Mongo. The first thing I'm going to do is give my connection a name. I'll test it out, make sure it's OK, and then I'll save it. Now we're ready to start our first query. Now we auto detects the collections within our Mongo database. If it was a relational database, it would have auto detected the tables within it. So of my collections that I have here, I'm going to choose the restaurant collection. The Data Explorer lets us know all of the collections and also the fields within those collections. I'm now going to use the Query Builder to select some fields that I want to analyze. I'm going to do borough, cuisine, address, and name of restaurant. As you can see, as I was doing that, on the right hand side, a native Mongo query was being auto generated. If I already knew the query I needed, I could have easily have pasted this in directly and not used the query builder. OK, that looks good. I think I'm going to preview my data. That looks great. Let me give my query a name. And create our first visualization. I'm now going to hop over and create a dashboard. From there, I'm going to drag the query that I just created onto my dashboard. By default, it is in grid form, but now I can choose a different visualization for it. To do that, I click on Analyze. And by coming down here, I can select the metrics I like. So I would like to know, by borough and by cuisine, the number of different cuisines that exist. So I'm going to do a count on the ID. And here I get, for example, in the Bronx, there are 38 types of bakery. I now want to go from grid to something like stack column. And that's great, but a little bit too messy. So now I want to go and group. I'm going to group by cuisine. That looks better. I'm going to save that to my dashboard. So here it is. The grid has now become a visualization. But it's still a little bit too much information for me. So I'm going to go and filter that. And I want to filter on cuisine type. So I only really want to have Asian cuisine. Japanese and maybe Vietnamese. So I'm filtering my results right now. There we go. That's much, much better. This looks great. But now I want to know where these restaurants are actually located. In order to do that, I'm going to create a drill down into the location for each restaurant. When I did the original query, I brought back a superset of information. I actually brought back the, the coordinates, the address information. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone this widget. I'm going to call it location. And I'm going to add it to the dashboard. There we go. Right now it's completely identical. But now I'm going to go in and I'm going to change it. So I'm going to remove the grouping I currently have on the existing one. And I'm going to basically bring in the coordinates of where the restaurant is. Then I'm going to choose a different type of chart. I'm going to choose a geocluster. And there we have our location of our restaurants. I'm going to save this information. And I'm going to go back to my dashboard. Aha! So what I did there was I ran one query, but from that one query, I made two visualizations. And this is very important. You could make two queries if you wish, but if you already have all of the information, then you can reuse. Now what I want to do is create a drill down from here into here. So let me do that. I go to drill downs and I'll say I want to drill down into the location widget I just created. I'm going to drill down on um, borough and borough 
and I'm going to save that. I'm going to remove this one from the dashboard. There we go. And as you can see, we can drill down into the individual restaurants.